Welcome to Wise All Paint Party. I'm Mark Dreamer of Refurbished Gentleman and your creative director for Wise All Paint. Today, I'm working on a video per request. On Instagram, I had someone actually ask a question about dry brushing on a piece that doesn't have details. So I posted a video over here on YouTube that showed how to add our gilding paints to that detail area of that dresser I worked on. But what if you want to do dry brushing like on a large flat area? or on a piece that just in generally doesn't have any details. Would you do it? Why would you do it? How would you do it? That's what we're gonna work on today. So if that's something you're looking forward to, stay tuned today at Wise Out Paint Party. So as always, first and foremost, what do you need? So I'm working on this entryway table, has no real detail to it, so I wanna give it something. So the main thing is your dry brushing colors. So this is Poseidon, absolutely stunning, beautiful, deep, dark, blue-green color. And then I'm gonna use black as our dry brushing. And then we're gonna see how that's gonna change the piece and then also what's gonna happen afterwards. But that's something new and different for later. But for now, just dry brushing. So why would you do it? Ultimately, you know, you're looking at your piece, it's flat, it's plain, it's one color, it doesn't have a lot of dimension to it. So you're thinking, what else can I do? Now you can do some blending, you could do a color wash, or you can add a dry brush layer or multiple dry brush layers. So that's what we're gonna do to this piece. I painted it the two coats of Poseidon. I know what I'm gonna do after that, which for another video, but I wasn't really happy with the flat one color look. I wanted to have just some more dimension to add to the dimension I'm going to add later. So I thought, why not do some dry brushing? So what I'm gonna start off with is, again, dry brushing the black all over the flat areas. I'm just gonna walk through how I do that. Now again, the main reason for this is just, if you have a piece that's a one color finish and you just don't feel like it's getting it done, it doesn't, give you that look that you're going for for your finish. A dry brush is a really quick, easy, cheap way to go ahead and add that layer on. And I say cheap because dry brushing uses the most minimal amount of paint possible and it's really, really easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt the camera, I'm gonna bring it down, I'm just gonna show you in generalized areas. So the flat area and then probably one of the legs which really doesn't have a lot of detail to it. So it's just a great video for, if I don't have detail, how I can add some depth and dimension. So what you're gonna need is your color for your dry brush. And I use an El Cheapo chip brush most of the time when I'm doing dry brushing on large flat areas because you can get a three inch or wider chip brush and it just covers the area a little bit better, a little bit easier. And then blue shop towels because you're gonna dip and you're gonna dry off your brush a little bit and then you're gonna go after it. I'll walk through that a little bit closer up so you can actually see specifically what I'm doing and how I'm doing and what it's gonna look like. All right, so I got you all zoomed in. You see this is our two coats of Poseidon after two coats of clear primer because I wasn't sure if I was gonna do any distressing. So. Basically what I have over here is I got my El Cheapo chip brush. I got my black in the can. And all I'm gonna do is just use my stir stick, stir it up a little bit. And I'm gonna dip my chip brush kind of on the stir stick. And I'm just gonna drag it across my blue shop towel and get as much of the paint off while leaving some on as possible. And this is why it's called a dry brush. If you're new to dry brushing, this is why, because you're basically getting just ever so slightest amount, you can see on my hand, not a lot of paint, it's not like it was dripping all over, right? And this is what you do on a large flat area. All right, so you take your chip brush, you have it a little bit of paint on, I've wiped it off on my blue shop towel, and now I'm gonna lay it across my large flat area ever so gently. And you're just gonna drag gently, and you can go more, you can push down harder, Depending on how much you want, I'd say at first you just do a nice gentle and I'm going all the way across the piece even though I'm taking off outside the view of the camera. 
that's what I'm doing. So I'm doing one long dry brush all the way across. So I'm doing a one gentle stroke like this and then picking up where I left off and continuing that all the way across. And just laying down this ever so subtle. So, and I, I just did it without even thinking about it. So there's paint on this side, flip it over, get the paint on the other side. You're gonna do the same thing and you'll have a little bit more paint to go before you need to go back and re-dip your brush. You'll get heavier streaks here and there. That's okay. You go all the way across. And you just continue this process until it looks, has the look that you're wanting. So for me, I'm just trying to add a little bit more depth to the finish, add a little bit more something to it. And with this color already being a dark color, this is just making it even that little bit more moody look to it. Um, shaded, almost waxed look to it, right? So I'm gonna go all the way across and do that on both sides, from one side to the other. And as you start to lose paint, you go back, you dip on your paint stick or however you wanna do it. Or if you had a pile still left in your, your shop pile like I do here, I can dip in that and pull and drag until my brush is dry once again. And then start that same process over and continue all the way across. So now I'm gonna to need to move my paint can out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and drag this all the way across and drag it all the way across. And this is all you need to do for a big flat area. And then once you get the brush starts to lose paint, you can decide, do I wanna do some kind of cross hatching to pull up any brush strokes from below, which is what I want for this. So you kind of give it that perfectly imperfect look so it's not so like streaky across it. You can give it some, some more unique detail, but still dry brushing, still giving it just the ever so gentle touch of that color you're using. So, okay, I'm gonna go back to my shop towel and my hand mouth. Dry brush a little bit of that off and go back and do the same thing. Dry brushing all the way across, bring it all the way back. And then as I lose paint, I can push a little harder. And as I push a little harder, I'm losing paint. I know I can start maybe doing a little bit of this kind of cross hatch. And I left some brush strokes in the Poseidon for this dry brushing to catch. So that's a tricky part too, is if you put, you know, brush strokes in your paint below, this gentle dry brushing over the top is just gonna accentuate those. And to me, it looks really cool. So you can kind of see the depth. Now it looks like it's shaded Poseidon and not just plain Poseidon. And then there's more, more to be done to this piece. And that'll be another video. But for this one, I just wanted to show dry brushing over, you know, areas that do not have detail. So I'm dipping, wiping, and then dragging my brush ever so gently, ever so gently. And then as I lose paint, I decide, okay, I want to do some cross etching. Now you can just do the streaks straight across. If you didn't want to get too adventurous with it at first. You can just do the straight, 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 and just have that gentle layered lined dry brush over the top. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to have a little bit more naturally, I don't know, natural, more natural stone kind of look, I guess. That's the way, a lot of times when I do this dry brushing, it's with grays and it's a stone style finish that I've done many, many times in the past. Um, but the, for this one, obviously it's a blue. And then you'll see little nuggets of paint will start to crumble up. That's just because you got that dry brush going on and the paint will dry on you. So you just kind of brush those away and you just continue this all the way through your large fly area. And this is kind of what you're gonna get. So again, dip your brush, wipe it on your shop towel, dry off the ends, and then gently over the top and the harder you push, the more paint's gonna come off. So as you lose paint, you can push a little harder. And as you start to lose the paint, you just go back and add some. All right, and now as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and do the legs and a little bit of the side. And it's the same exact process. I'm dipping in my paint, I'm dragging it across my blue shop towel, and then I'm going across those flat areas. 
The only difference is going to be with this is I'm not going to go straight, straight, straight over and over and over because there's some cornered edges. And what I wanted to do was complement the rounded and cornered edges of the top with everywhere that's a rounded and or cornered edge throughout the leg. So you'll see me, so I'm dragging straight first, just like I did in the table, and then I'm going directly across each of the cornered and or rounded areas to ensure I get that black onto those areas so they can get basically highlighted. And as you can see in the leg that's closest to us, you can see the corners and the edges and all that stuff have that black and it just it's really i mean i'm telling you it looks way better in person because it's hard to even capture this color in person but the way the black goes on to the poseidon really deepens and gives it this really moody shaded like i said in the other part waxed kind of look to it which is really cool but you're not changing poseidon poseidon's still there you're just adding a more another layer of depth and dimension to it. So as you can see in this little picture that popped up, this is probably a better close-up shot of what you're gonna get. It's like I said, it's really hard to capture blue greens on camera. So even the color that you're seeing is not the actual Poseidon color. And even capturing the dry brushing of a dark color over top of Poseidon was even harder. So I took this picture got you a little closer, but you can see how that dry brushing first get going the length of the long area and then kind of crisscrossing and cross hatching and all this stuff brought up all the details from below. And with this, it's a solid wood, um, Amish made wood piece. So it's real wood. So the little dents and all the things in it is legit real wood nice piece so it was kind of cool to bring out a little bit of those details that were kind of hiding as it was just wood so you painted it in a couple coats of Poseidon and then you go over it with this dry brushing so it goes from that plane you can see from one leg to the other the one leg that I'm working on right now you know it was one color that's all it was so it's kind of plain and okay and as as I go up this leg you'll see me I'm going to start dry brushing over all the edges in the long area and then just add something more. I absolutely love this technique. It's something I really enjoy doing when I feel like a one color finish just doesn't do it. And for the chunky legged feel of this piece, I felt like giving it um, something more was just necessary. And then what I'm going to do to the top, which is going to be another video, uh, just gave it another layer because there's going to be a lot of layering starting with the base coat up through to the final touches that I'm going to do to it. And then we went back to the top. So as you'll find when you dry brush, you're going to want to go light to start. And then as you progress, you progress, you might need to do two or three coats of your dry brushing, depending on what you think, what you end up liking or not liking about what you've done. So for me, the top I did super, super light. I mean, you could barely see it in the video. You can see a lot better now with this close up. And then I did the legs and all the other areas and I got a little heavy, heavier handed, which I really, really liked. So I went back to the top and I carried that same heavier look, especially to the corners and edges as you see me doing here. And then more across the top. And I simply went and did the same exact process, except I did a little bit more as you see me cross hatching all over, which is bringing out all that yummy brush strokes of Poseidon that I left in it. So when I did the initial coat of Poseidon, that's what I did. So this is a really fun technique. Uh, just wanted to give you a couple different angles so you can see exactly how it's gonna look. So there you have it. Little chip brush, little Wysol paint and dry brushing that easy. Cheap, easy, no problem way to take a plain flat surface and turn it into something that has a little bit more depth, a little bit more character, a little bit more dimension to it than just that one color finish. I love it. I think it's great. It's an easy way to go ahead and just do something different to your finish. 
So if you want to give it a try today, be sure to contact your local YZR retailer nearest you to find some paint. I'll have in the description down below how to find the retailer nearest you. Hope everybody enjoyed this video. Has a blessed day and as always, happy painting.